Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new asset that I've created called Floor. It lets you take a simple mesh layout like this, add in some cutter objects like this, and end up with a floor plan like this. Let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is locate a floor plan that we want to use to base our scene off of. I did a quick search on Google for free floor plans, and I found this one on civicconcepts.com. I'm going to right click on this and say copy image. Now in Blender, I've enabled the image paste add-on. I'll put a link to where you can get that in the description. And with that enabled, I'll press Control Shift V. Now I'll want to scale this up to real world size. The floor plan says that the dining room is 11 feet by 10 feet. So I'm going to take our default cube and put in the X and Y dimensions of 11 feet and 10 feet. And then I'm going to scale up my image until the dining room matches the size of this new cube. There, I think that'll be close enough for now. I'm going to move the image so it's centered with my world coordinates and make sure that it's at zero on the z-axis. Once it's here, I'll press the N key to open the tool shelf and then lock its location, rotation, and scale. Now I can't move this by accident. Later on, I don't want to fight with having to keep selecting and unselecting this either. So under the object properties, I'm going to go to visibility and uncheck selectable. Now the only way I can select this is with the outliner, no matter how many times I click on it. One last thing we're going to want to do to our image is go here under our object data properties and turn on opacity, and then drop the opacity quite a bit. There, now we're ready to start laying out our floor plan. I'm going to add a plane, and in edit mode, I'm just going to scale it up a bit and just kind of work it into place. I'm going to add cuts to line up with the walls. Now that I have edges over each one of the walls, I'm going to go into edit mode, press 2 to go into edge select mode, and now I'm going to get rid of edges that aren't over the walls. I'm not worrying about any door openings right now. Only openings that go all the way from the floor to the ceiling. In this case, the opening between the dining room and the kitchen, we may want the opening to only go up part way. So we're going to treat this like a door opening. Now that we have all this, I'm going to select everything, press X, and say delete only faces. So all I'm left with are a series of edges that define my walls. If you want to move things around later, that will be really easy, and you don't have to have it perfect right now. Next, I'll pull up my asset browser, and then add in my floor planner. I'll go back into object mode, and then drag the floor planner onto my floor plan. By default, the walls are 6 inches wide and 9 feet tall. Next, we'll want to be able to add a floor and a ceiling. So going back into edit mode, while in edge select mode, I'm going to select the outer rim of my model. And then I'm going to come to the attributes menu under my object property details. I'll create a new attribute. The name will be outline. The domain is edge and the data type is float. Now with this selected over here in the 3D window, I'm going to press F3 to search and type in set attribute. And I'll type in a value of one for my outline. 
Now, if I go to my modifiers tab, I can look at my options for the floor planner. One of the options is a floor and ceiling outline. This is the attribute that contains the edges of the outline of our floor plan. So I'll type in outline. Once I have that, I can press the add floor button. And I can also add the add ceiling button. At this point, I can change the height of my walls if I want. So if I want eight foot walls, I can do that. If I want four inch thick walls, I can put that in. If I've created a material for my walls, I can choose that here. Now let's look at how we cut out doors and windows. What you'll want to do is create some objects that will represent the holes that will go in your walls. So I'll add a cube. My doors will be seven feet tall. We'll start with them being two and a half feet wide. And then we can reduce the thickness to something thicker than our walls. Let's say eight inches. Now that we have this, we can place this in our door openings. If you have a smaller door, like say to the bathroom here, you can shrink it down to fit. Or if you have a larger opening, you can expand it. If you have precise measurements, you can of course put those in too. We're gonna move these up into place and make sure they go all the way down to the floor. or even just beyond it, a hair. Once we've placed our doors, with them all selected, we'll press M to move them to a new collection. We'll call this wall cutters. And then here in our modifier, under wall cutters, we'll choose the collection we created. Now, whether or not it looks like it, the holes have been cut. And so to get these cutting objects out of the way, we'll simply disable our wall cutter collection. If you're building a multi-story model, you could of course duplicate your whole floor plan and move it up. And then you can use the floor and ceiling cutter groups to cut holes for a stairwell. But we're not gonna do that in this particular tutorial. You can add a material for your floor. In this case, I'll use the Polyhaven Asset Library and their textures and their laminate floor texture. I'll drop that on my model and under the floor material, I'll choose laminate floor. Under shading, I'll adjust the scale in mapping so it's the size that I want. Having placed our camera down inside, we can easily toggle our ceiling and we can see what kind of effects we're getting. Now, just like your doors, you can add cutter objects for your windows. Once you're done adding them, simply move them to your wall cutters collection. Since the wall cutters collection is disabled, they'll disappear, but your window holes will be added. I'm going to add a sky texture to my world and then move my camera around a little bit. So with just these few steps, we've been able to create the entire floor plan of our house that we can start filling in with objects. And if at any time you wanted to extend your ceiling, say up to nine foot ceilings, you could simply come into the modifier and change the wall height. The only real caveat that I've come up with so far is when walls are not at 90 degree angles with each other. So if you do have walls that don't meet up at 90 degree angles, 
you may see slight overlaps at the edges that you'll either have to edit out manually or add in those walls manually yourself later. But when you're doing a floor plan, the mass majority of walls will be at right angles to one another. So this isn't usually a problem. The floor planner asset is available on my Gumroad page for free download right now. So go there, download it, check it out. If you find it useful and you want to kick in a few dollars at checkout, you're more than welcome to do that. If you want this source file that I've done in the video, it's available over on my Patreon, where I have many of the project files from my videos available to my subscribers. Speaking of which, as you see their names scroll by, I want to give them a big shout out for their continued support of the channel. Thanks to all of you so much. So anyway, I hope this new tool inspires you to create something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.